you cheat with the guy I hate the most, I can play that too. So I went to use my wife's phone, and she had Facebook up, and she was talking to this jerk with whom I used to be close friends. A little history on the guy, he wasn't from the old area, so we became friends over basketball and I would defend him from problems, but as time passed, I saw he was into ladies younger than him, so I couldn't be friends with or involved with that. We got into a fight, he had to have his jaw wired shut, and that was the last of him. So my ex-wife was chatting to him, and since she is a little naive, she didn't realize he was flirting with her. He suggested they meet for coffee on Wednesday, and she accepted. At the time, she and I were going through a hard stretch, we married at a young age of 19, but I felt she was the one for me, and we've had three children since then. I phone my supervisor and explain that I need Wednesday off due to family circumstances, and he says it's alright. They decided to meet at Starbucks after I read her texts again. So, when it was time for them to meet, I pretended to leave to work but waited outside a block away, saw he picked her up, and went to a downtown Starbucks. I follow them there and remain in the vehicle, at the same time, I'm messaging all of my pals, telling them that the old me has returned and explaining what's going on. Two of my friends are attorneys, and they gladly assisted me in drafting a separation agreement and initiating divorce proceedings. I follow the out of Starbucks and notice that they are on their way to his home. Now I simply park and wait two minutes before knocking on the door, so when I knock on the door, I hide down so they can't see me through the peephole, then when I hear the door open up, I hide down again. I storm in, and he stares at me as if he's seen a ghost. I see my ex-wife in her bra, and all I can say is, so this is what you do in your spare time? I'm leaving. She rushes me outside, screaming, claiming she has no idea what's going on with her and that they didn't have sex, but I immediately urged her to duck, don't come back to the house, and if I see you with him, I'll ask him what will happen. As I'm going, he tosses her out, and I can see he's terrified, which, to be honest, I've done horribly in the past, but he knows me, he knows the trash I've done, and he knows what I'm capable of. I go to her Facebook page and see a message from him that says, keep the duck away from me. She attempts to return inside the home, and I warn her that if she goes any farther into the house, I would tell her whole family what she did. She comes out screaming, begging for her belongings, and I simply dump that rubbish outside and in ordered her to go away. One of my friends, who happens to be a policeman, came to my home and said the piece of trash filed a restraining order against me and my wife, requiring us to remain 100 feet away from him. He understood what was going on and told me how certain words got to some individuals, how the piece of trash had a ducked up fetish, and how he happened to be dropped off in the old area after he filed the restraining orders. I told him I wanted a restraining order against my wife until we divorced. Soon after, I informed the kids that we won't be seeing mom for a while, and I phoned her from an app, telling her that she can explain herself to the kids and that she can have the kids on the weekend as long as she stays away from me. I cut her off before she starts the entire I'm sorry, forgive me nonsense. As we go through the divorce, we had to go through an online course for the kids, which was the most stupid $20 I've ever spent, we get everything sorted, the court decided that the prenup is legal, so the bit doesn't receive any alimony. We sell the home and share the proceeds 50-50. I used half of my money to acquire a great loft and still had enough money to get a new automobile. We're in court now, and the judge asks, do you guys really have everything settled? I'm happy to say yes, but she bursts out crying again saying she's not this and that, and as a result, we had to go to child support, where kids have to say where they want to live, and I considered telling them how mommy doesn't believe in Santa Claus, but I didn't. I agreed weekends to have the kids since she didn't work and she went to live with her parents, who have more than enough money to support all of the kids, but because of my job, I can't pick up two of them from school and keep a two-year-old at my workplace, but I was glad. When her younger sister came over to bring off the kids, she inquired how I was doing. I quickly took advantage of it and told her how lonely and unhappy I was since I had lost the one true love of my life. Her sister stayed over and cooked dinner for the kids and I, and she remained after to speak. I told her how much I missed her sister, but what she did isn't forgivable, and she agreed. And then we began kissing, which led to Zex. I started working out to get in better shape and maintain a relationship with her sister until one day when I FaceTimed her and my ex-wife was nearby and she heard my voice and all I heard was them two arguing about how she betrayed her and how my ex apparently told her to see if there was any chance of them getting back together. To be honest, I had forgiven my ex-wife, but I didn't want to speak to or see her. Her relatives took turns bringing the kids over, and then I told her cousins the tale, and with one of them, I began to be FWB with them. My ex-wife then came over once, but I ordered her to wait outside since she is not permitted inside. She attempted to explain that she had gone to counseling and that she was a new person who simply wanted a chance. 
I forgave her, but she began to irritate me since I was over her. I accidentally mentioned how I slept with her cousin, which caused her to scream, so I sent her outside to cry. Now I've moved on, I'm FWB with two gals I date either of them, and I'm still young, just 29 years old. My ex-wife had fallen into horrible condition while I was always going to the gym and working on myself. I mean, I miss a lot of what she's done for me, but what she did was wrong, and I'll never forget it. Story 2. Wife posted on Gone World. My wife and I have been married for 15 years, we have three children, and life is generally nice. We began discussing about her uploading nude photographs on Reddit a few weeks ago, she's a gorgeous lady who was looking for some anonymous attention, and the concept of it was a great turn on for me. So, after some thought and discussion, we decided to give it a go. We established ground rules, and she vowed to be completely open and honest with me. Great. She shared a couple photographs, and it went viral. She received hundreds of messages and upvotes, and we spent the most of the night interacting with people and having a good time. We had that night, and it was some of the greatest we'd ever had. It was a huge turn-on for both of us. However, things took a turn for the worst when a very attractive guy sent her a conversation request on the messaging app kick. I could see she was turned on by what he was saying and the visuals he was showing her right away. This didn't bother me since it was sort of the goal. I asked her whether she was still speaking with anybody a few days later, and she responded no. Okay, I reasoned, no problem. When I stepped into our bathroom a few hours later and discovered her taking a picture of her boobs, she became embarrassed slash flustered and immediately made up a narrative that she was only taking a snapshot for herself and no one else. I felt it was strange, so I brought it up later in the day and urged her to be completely honest with me. She doubled down on the narrative. It's not a huge deal. We had a usual night, and I went to bed at 10 o'clock. I awoke about 2 a.m. for some reason, and my wife was up messaging on kick, so she didn't realize that I had awoken. I feigned to be sleeping while watching her send him photographs and texts. My heart sank to the ground. After some thought, I decided to give my wife another chance to tell me the truth, so I asked her again the following day if she had been texting anybody, and she answered flatly no and that she wasn't interested in talking to anyone. So I was definitely skeptical at this point. Later, while she was in the shower, I glanced through her phone, I noticed the discussion, but most of the texts had been erased, and none of the photographs she had sent the night before were there. I was hesitant about telling her about it, but I ultimately chose to tell her that night. She first lied and stated she wasn't talking to anybody, but when I said that I had gone through her phone and found missing messages, she ultimately confessed to giving him many photographs, including one with her face, which was a major violation of our agreement. She said she was swept up and began to develop affections for this person, and that he tricked her into sending photographs. She said that she was ashamed and felt terrible about how she felt about him, therefore she couldn't be honest with me since it would hurt me too much. I suppose I should share some background information about us. My wife and I have had a lot of trust difficulties in our marriage, she cheated on me once, and I would often catch her chatting with ex-boyfriends. When I confronted her, she would lie until I could absolutely verify what she had done, at which point she would break down and confess everything. But it was years ago, and she's been seen to be upfront and honest with me for a long time. We'd both matured a lot and I felt like we were in a good place and that I could trust her to do something like this. I believe I was mistaken. That night, she messaged the man on kick and told him she couldn't communicate to him anymore. Then uninstalled the app. She also got rid of her Reddit account. She said she would never do anything like this again since she cares about our marriage and our family. I'm undecided on what to do. It would be one thing if this were the first infraction, but it isn't. So, obviously, I'm heartbroken. Part of me simply wants to bunker down and remain together for the sake of the kids, to become remote and disconnected. I'm in a loveless marriage, and I'm at a loss on what to do.